If tangent theta equals negative four-thirds and theta is in quadrant two, we want to determine each trig function value. To do this, we want to sketch the reference triangle for angle theta. And since theta is in quadrant two, or this quadrant here, let's go ahead and assume that this is the terminal side of angle theta, which means the angle between this side and the x-axis, or this angle here, would be our reference angle, which we'll call theta sub r. And then we can form the reference triangle by sketching a segment from the terminal side that's perpendicular to the x-axis, like this. So now we have a reference angle and a reference triangle. And since tangent theta is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side, and we're told that tangent theta equals negative four-thirds, this will help us label the two legs of our reference triangle. But keep in mind that we are in the second quadrant where the x-coordinate is negative and the y-coordinate is positive. So while tangent theta is equal to the ratio of the length of the opposite side to the adjacent side, it's also equal to y divided by x if we have a point on the terminal side of the angle. Which means if tangent theta is equal to negative four-thirds and we're in the second quadrant, the opposite side is positive four because y is positive, and the adjacent side would be negative three because x is negative in the second quadrant. And now before we find the trig function values, we need to find the length of the hypotenuse, which will always be positive. We should recognize this as a three, four, five right triangle, but just in case we don't, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to determine the length of the hypotenuse. So if we label this r, we would have r squared equals negative three squared plus four squared. So we have r squared equals nine plus 16. r squared equals 25. Square root both sides. Again, we know r has to be positive, so we have r equals five. So this is all the information we need to find these trig function values. So sine theta is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse, or four divided by five. So we have four fifths. Cosine theta is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. So we'd have negative three divided by five, or negative three fifths. Now there's two ways to find secant theta. Since secant theta is equal to the reciprocal of cosine theta, and cosine theta equals negative three-fifths, secant theta must be negative five-thirds. Using a reference triangle, we'd have the ratio of the hypotenuse to the adjacent side, which is negative five-thirds. And there's two ways to find cosecant theta. Since cosecant theta is reciprocal of sine theta, and sine theta equals four-fifths, then cosecant theta is equal to five-fourths. Or using our triangle, we'd have the ratio of the hypotenuse to the opposite side, again, five-fourths. And then finally for cotangent theta, and then for cotangent theta, since cotangent theta is equal to the reciprocal of tangent theta, and we're given tangent theta equals negative four-thirds, we know cotangent theta must be equal to negative three-fourths. Or using the triangle, we'd have the ratio of the adjacent side to the opposite side, or negative three-fourths. So when doing these types of problems, it is important that we pay close attention to which quadrant we're in, because it does affect the sign of the legs of the reference triangles. I hope you found this explanation helpful.